Hey, one key use of signals is to manage state in our Angular applications. Before we jump into a demo, let's clarify the concept of state. State is basically data that we retain in our code, often in variables defined as class properties. We define state in our components to keep component-level data, such as the user's desired sort order or current selected item. We define state in our services to retain data used throughout the application, such as the list of vehicles for sale or the content of the user's shopping cart. In some cases, we need to support CRUD operations on that data. What's CRUD? That's create, read, update, and delete, so the user can create a cart, update it, that is, add items to the cart or adjust the quantity, and delete items from the cart. In this video, we'll do just that. If you are new to Angular v16 signals, check out my introductory signals video. You can find the link to that video in the upper right corner now, or in this video's notes. Let's get started. Here is my Star Wars vehicle sales application. In a prior video linked above, we modified the cart item component to create signals. These signals manage the state for this component. We have the valid quantities, which we use to bind to a quantity dropdown. Here we manage the cart item itself. And here we use a computed signal to calculate the extended price, which is the selected quantity times the cost of the item. In this video, we'll work on the cart service. Currently, we're managing the cart state using observables. We'll change all of this code to use signals instead. Before we start modifying the code, let's take a quick look at how the cart functionality works. I'll run the application. And here is the application in action. Click on Vehicle List, and we see our list of vehicles. Select a vehicle, and the vehicle detail appears. Click on Add to Cart to add the selected vehicle to the cart. Notice that the menu shows the number of items in the cart. Select a second vehicle and click on Add to Cart to add another vehicle to the cart. Click on the Cart menu and we see the items in our cart, along with the cart total. Dropping down the quantity, we see the list from our Quantity Array signal. Notice that when we select a new quantity, the extended price, shown here as the cost, reacts to the change and recalculates as does our cart totals. And if we delete one of the items from our cart, the cart totals recalculate. Now let's see how to manage our state using signals. Here is the cart service. Notice that it's implemented using RxJS and observables. Many of us use observables to manage state in our services. This is a bit challenging because observables emit data and don't retain that data by default. This is different from signals that do hold on to that data value. If we want to perform CRUD operations with observables, we need to either use a behavior subject, which retains the last emitted item, or use something like the scan operator, which retains and provides the last emitted item and lets us modify that item before emitting it again. We define an action to tell the observable whether we are adding an item to the cart updating the item quantity, or deleting an item from the cart. We then respond to that action, modifying the cart. When the cart item's array emits, we recalculate the subtotal. And if that subtotal emits, we recalculate the delivery fee, tax, and total price, all using observables. If you didn't follow all of that, don't worry. We're going to delete all of this code. Let's start with the cart which is an array of cart items. We'll create a signal, cart items equal signal, and we'll add the import for the signal. We'll start with an empty array as the initial value. Hovering over cart items, we see that it is of type never array. That's not what we want. Let's strongly type the signal using the generic argument, cart item array. And let's add a comment. We no longer need this subject because the cart item signal will provide notification when the cart changes. 
and we don't need this cart items observable, so I'll delete that as well. But what about this subtotal observable? Any idea how to implement that with signals? If you set a computed signal, you are correct. Let's create a computed signal. Subtotal equal computed. And we'll add the import for computed. For the computed expression, we'll copy the code from our observable pipeline and paste it into our computed expression. I'll do a little reformatting, then change items to our cart item signal. Don't forget the parentheses to read the signal. This code reads the cart items array signal, then uses the array reduce method. That method processes each array element in order passing in the return value from the calculation on the preceding element, A in this example, with the current element, B in this example. The first time that this method executes, there is no value from the prior calculation. So at the end here, we provide an initial value of zero. Now we can delete the subtotal observable. Next, we'll create a signal for the delivery fee. And yep, we'll do that with a computed signal as well. Delivery fee equal computed. For the computed expression, we'll read the subtotal signal. If that value is less than 100,000 credits, the fee is 999 credits. Otherwise, it's zero. And we can delete this observable. How about the tax? Another computed signal. Tax equal computed. For the computed expression, we'll copy the calculation from the observable pipeline, paste it here, and change T to instead read our subtotal signal. And we no longer need this observable. And lastly, we'll add a computed signal for the price. Total price equals computed. In our computed expression, we read the subtotal signal and add that to the delivery phase signal and the tax signal. Then delete this observable. That looks pretty straightforward and easy to read. We have our cart, which is an array of cart items. We have the subtotal, delivery fee, tax, and total price, all as signals. Scrolling down, but what about our CRUD operations? Adding to the cart, removing items from the cart, or updating the quantity in the cart? Instead of emitting into an observable to kick off a notification and recalculate, like this code does, we'll instead modify our signal. The signal will automatically provide notification, and all computed signals will recalculate. Let's start with the Add to Cart method. Here we create a cart item that includes the user-selected vehicle and a default quantity of 1. And we provide an action of Add. We emit that value to our observable. Instead, we'll now add the item to our cart items array signal. We don't need to worry about an action because the signals will provide notification. To make an internal change to a signal's value without changing the signal's identity, use mutate. Mutate is useful for modifying the content of an array or changing object properties. We'll call the cart item signals mutate method. In the mutate expression, we push a new cart item with the selected vehicle and a default quantity of 1. Now we can delete the code that calls next on the observable. To remove an item from the cart, we want to use the array filter method to filter out the deleted cart item. However, the filter method doesn't update the existing array. Rather, it creates a new array. So we'll use the update method to modify the value of the signal based on the current value of that signal. In the update expression, we use the array filter method and only return the array items that don't have the same vehicle name as the deleted item, effectively creating a new array with all but the deleted item. Normally we would use IDs instead of names here, but this particular data has no IDs. We no longer need this code, so let's delete it. Lastly, to update the quantity of the item in the cart, we use the array map method. The map method processes each item in the array to find and update the appropriate cart item. 
Like the array filter method, the map method creates a new array, so we'll again call the update method of the signal. Reference the signal, call its update method. In the update expression, use the cart items array map method. For each item in the cart, if the item has a vehicle name that matches the updated item, we replace the item with the new item in quantity. Otherwise, we return the original item. Again, normally we would use IDs instead of the name. Now we can delete the code that uses the subject. Since we are handling the changes to our cart items array signal directly in these methods, we don't need this additional method that modifies the cart, so we can delete it. Scrolling up, let's delete our unused imports. Our service now exposes several signals that our components can use to access our state. So next we need to access these signals from our components. I'll open the cart total component TS file. We'll change each of these observables to a signal instead. Our cart items dollar becomes cart items. The subtotal dollar becomes subtotal. The delivery fee dollar is now delivery fee. Tax dollar is tax. And total price dollar is total price. Then we bind to these signals in the template, which in this case is in the cart total component HTML file. Here at the top, instead of the async pipe, we'll bind to the signal. Don't forget the opening and closing parentheses to read the signal value. And since the signal always has a value, we don't need the question mark here. Next, we change each of our computed signals. Subtotal here. Delivery fee, which is referenced in this NGF here, this binding, and this NGF down here then tax, and total price. Our template now binds to our signals, but we're not quite finished. Our cart state is used in a few more places. I'll open the cart list component.ts file. We'll change the reference to our cart items observable to our cart item signal, and change the binding to read that signal. Lastly, recall that our menu displayed the quantity of items in our cart, so I'll open the app.component.ts file. Here we calculate the quantity. How do we change that to a signal? Yep, it's another computed signal. We'll create a cart count computed signal, add the import, and in the computed expression, we read the signal from the service. We then use the arrays reduce method to total up the quantity of items in the cart. Then we can delete this observable and delete the unused imports. Let's change the template as well. Open the app component.html file. Here we display the cart quantity. We'll change it to use the signal instead of the async pipe. And let's add an ng if so we only display the quantity if the value is set to a non-zero number. That should be it. Let's give it a try. I'll bring up the application. Click vehicle list to see the list of vehicles. Select a vehicle and click Add to Cart. Notice that our cart quantity is updated. Select another vehicle and click on Add to Cart. And again, our quantity is updated. Click on Cart and we see our cart. Change the quantity on one of the items and all of our computed signals recalculate. Nice! Next, let's try out the Delete. Click X to delete one of the items from the cart and our totals adjust accordingly. Cool! Going back to the cart service, by using signals to manage our state, we've simplified our code, making it easier to read, modify, and maintain. If you have any questions or would like to see a video on another signal topic, please post those questions or suggestions in the comments. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe!